Hi, everybody. My name is Natasha. And my name is Rob. In a moment, we will be acting the third and final part of A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. Adapted by Mike Betteridge of the Working Space Theatre Company. <coughs> oh no, it can't be one o'clock already. I've only just gone to bed. <laughs> oh, Ebenezer Scrooge. Come here, come here and know me better, man. I am the ghost of Christmas present. You have never seen anything like me before. No, you're right. I haven't. Have you met my brothers? Your brothers? I have many brothers. For every Christmas there has ever been, and for every Christmas there ever will be, there is a ghost of Christmas present. Now these are all my brothers, and each of us only lives for one day each year on Christmas. Spirit, show me what you will. Last night I saw my past. If you have anything new to teach me, please let me learn from it. <laughs> Very well. You shall see the home of your clerk, Bob Cratchit. No, Spirit, I don't want to... Why, this is Bob Cratchit's house. It's so small and has such little furniture. Ah, that must be Mrs. Cratchit in the kitchen, getting the Christmas dinner ready. <laughs> She's peeling a few blackened potatoes... Roasting a very small goose and boiling a tiny Christmas pudding. I never realised they had so little. It's hardly enough to feed one person, let alone the whole Cratchit family. Tim! Tiny Tim, where are you? That's Bob Cratchit now. And that must be his youngest child, Tiny Tim. Oh, there you are. Look, Tim, look at all the wonderful decorations and candles everybody's part of for Christmas. Don't they look wonderful? Um, can you smell the goose cooking? You know, I hope there's enough to go round for everybody, because what with the money Mr Scrooge pays me doesn't go very far normally without it being Christmas. Poor tiny Tim. He looks so ill. I can't look at this anymore. I really can't. Here, Tim. Have a seat. I know how ill you are. Anybody home? Yes, just getting the Christmas dinner ready. Is young Tim with you? Hope you haven't worn him out. You know how ill he is. Oh, you would have been proud of him, my dear. He said, despite being so ill, he hoped that when people saw him, it would remind them who it was on Christmas Day who healed the sick and helped the poor. <laughs> Is the goose ready, my dear? Yes, all ready to eat. Well, I'd better come and carve it then, hadn't I? I've got to go carve the goose, Tim. I'll be back for you later. Come in! <laughs> the Cratchit family are all settling down to Christmas dinner. <laughs> they all seem to be having so much fun, despite having so little. What did I have to eat last Christmas? I had porridge. What do most people usually have? Goose? Cranberry sauce? Well, the Cratchit family have none of that. And what they do have, there is very little of it. And poor Tiny Tim, despite being so ill, still enjoys his Christmas. He even joins in the games and sings and dances and has a wonderful time. But will Tiny Tim live to see any more Christmases? Please tell me, Spirit, tell me. I see an empty seat at a table and a small bed made but not slept in. No, Spirit, no. If things continue as they are, Tiny Tim will not live to see any more Christmases. But why should that matter to you? There have been others who have needed your help in the past, and you did nothing. Why should Tiny Tim be any different? What people? Who? If there are less people in the world, then there's more of everything for me. 
Your words, Scrooge. Perhaps you should think before you speak. Yes. And do you really believe that you have more of a right to live than Tiny Tim? No, of course not. And whose health do you think the Cratchit family drank to over their Christmas dinner? Well, I don't know. Yours, Ebenezer Scrooge. Yours. But there is more to see, more to learn. And my time on Earth is short. Now look. (gasps) Spirit? It's all changing again. What are these visions you are showing me? I see people ill in hospital. I see old people, forgotten by their friends and relatives, alone and sad at Christmas. I can't look anymore, I can't. Where am I now? Scrooge, this is the home of your nephew, Fred. What am I doing here? He's raising a toast to your health, but he can't see you. Fred! Fred, you wouldn't believe the night I've had. I went to sleep, I saw two spirits... Listen, everyone, whatever you say about my old Uncle Scrooge, it would be ungrateful of us not to drink to his health. A Merry Christmas to the old man, whatever and wherever he is. Even if he is a silly and mean old man who never spends his money on anything good at all. (laughs) To Uncle Scrooge. (laughs) Come on, everyone. Let's have some fun and play some Christmas games. So now I know what Fred and his family really think of me. I'm just a figure of fun to them. A silly, mean old man who has more money than sense. But why should that bother me? It's never bothered me before. Perhaps you're learning something at last, Ebenezer Scrooge. I hope so, Spirit. I do hope so. You seem to have aged. My time on Earth is short. When will your life end? Tonight, at midnight. Which is soon, very soon. The time draws near, Ebenezer Scrooge. When you must meet the final spirit of Christmas. He must mean the spirit of Christmas yet to come. And it's meeting him that I fear more than anything. I don't think I want to know what happens in the future. Wait. What is that? It's starting. Oh no. Oh no, it's happening. I've got to hide somewhere. I must hide. Where am I going to go? I don't want to know what happens. I really don't, Spirit. Here, guess what I heard? Old Thingy, what's his name? The old miser chappy. He's only gone and popped his clogs. He's brown bread. Passed on? God, don't you understand? Dan proper English? I don't know what he's done with all his money, though. All I know is he hasn't left any to me. (laughs) I don't suppose there'll be many people at the funeral. Well, he didn't have many friends, did he? (laughs) Oh, dear. Didn't sound very healthy, did she? Could do with some cough mixture. Who can she mean? Perhaps she means old Jacob Marley. Yes, he was never very popular. And there certainly weren't many people at his funeral, I can tell you that much. Still, it is most strange and a bit puzzling. Who can this person be? Bob Cratchit. Bob, could you tell me about the, um, the person who's, who's passed away? I'm rather confused, I'd you see. I met Mr Scrooge's nephew, Fred, to die. Such a kind man. He wished me well and told me how sorry he was to hear about Tiny Tim. He gave me his card and said if there was anything he could do to help, I only had to ask. I'm sure none of us will ever forget Tiny Tim, will we? 
How can this be? Tiny Tim gone? I only saw them all yesterday and he was fine. Or was it yesterday? I seem to be losing track of the time. Nothing makes sense anymore. And where is that last spirit who was supposed to visit tonight? You're late. Perhaps he's decided not to come. Perhaps the spirits think that I've seen and learnt enough. That would make sense. But... Are you the spirit of Christmas yet to come? Wait! Spirit! Have you just shown me some visions of the future? Will Tiny Tim live to see another Christmas? And what about the old man who died? Without any friends, what was his name? Not very talkative, spirit. Where are you taking me? Well, it's a graveyard, spirit. I've seen a graveyard before. I've certainly seen a gravestone. Ebenezer Scrooge. It says Ebenezer Scrooge. Spirit. No, please, I'm not the person I was, spirit. I will learn to be a better person, spirit. I will learn to be a better person. I'll learn to celebrate Christmas, spirit. Please, spirit! <gasps> He's gone. Everything is still here. Just as it was. I'm still here. That must mean I can still change and become a better person. I'm as light as a feather. I'm as happy as an angel. I'm as giddy as a schoolboy. I don't even know what day it is. I don't even know what year it is. All I know is that I'm happy to be alive. Right! I'm going to open a window. I'm going to let some fresh air in. I never do. Right. What a beautiful day! You there, boy. Do you know what day it is? To die? Why, it's Christmas Day, sir. Then I haven't missed it. Then the spirits did it all in one night. But of course they did. They can do anything they want. Tell me, boy, do you know the butcher shop around the corner? Why, well, should I hope so, sir. What a remarkable boy. Do you know the turkey in the window, the really big one? What, the one as big as me? What an intelligent boy. Listen to me. I want you to go there and buy it. Jump straight into a cab and take it right round to Mr. Bob Cratchit's house as quickly as you can. Can you do that? Right. Here's the address. Here's some money for the turkey in the cab. And in there... It's five shillings for you. Oh, thank you, sir. Just make sure you don't tell Bob Cratchit who the turkey is from, all right? Right you are, sir. And a Merry Christmas to you, my lad. Merry Christmas. Oh, what a surprise Bob Cratchit's going to have when he sees that turkey. He won't have a clue who it's from. Right, I'm going out, and I'm going to go out and face the world. Uh, a Merry Christmas, everyone, and a Happy New Year. My dear boy... <clears throat> How are you? And I do hope you raised enough money yesterday to help the poor and needy. Mr. Scrooge? That's right. Please, forgive my behaviour yesterday. And I'll be very grateful if you would accept a donation towards your very worthwhile cause. How much? <laughs> oh, my dear Mr. Scrooge, you can't be serious. Yes, of course I'm serious, not a penny less. Well, I, I don't know what to say. This is very generous of you. Don't see anything at all. Just make sure you come back and see me, all right? I, I will, sir, I will. And a Merry Christmas. And a Merry Christmas to you. And the happiest of New Years. What next? I know. I'll go round to my nephew Fred's house. He's always inviting me for Christmas dinner, and I never go. Right. Hello? Is anyone in? Oh, bless my soul, who's that? It's your Uncle Scrooge. Come round for Christmas dinner, if you'd accept me. Well, of course. Come in, come in. Look, everyone, it's your Uncle Ebenezer. Merry Christmas! <laughs> what a wonderful day we had at Fred's yesterday. We sang, we laughed, we danced, 
and we ate far, far too much. Now is the day after Christmas, and I'm on my way to work. I mustn't be late. Oh my goodness, I'm late. I had such a wonderful Christmas yesterday, though. A huge turkey arrived, and we had no idea who sent it. We soon polished it off, though. Oh, everyone had such a wonderful time, especially Tiny Tim. Though I'm afraid I overslept a little this morning. I'll best hurry to the office. Excellent. Bob hasn't arrived yet. Right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play a little trick on Mr. Bob Cratchit. I'm going to make him think that I'm still the same mean old Scrooge I was before Christmas, all right? When he comes in, he's still going to think I'm very... Shh! Here he comes. Cratchit! You're late. I'm sorry, sir, Mr. Scrooge. It's only once a year, and uh, I was celebrating yesterday. It won't happen again. Well... I'm not going to stand for this sort of thing anymore. Therefore, therefore, I'm going to increase your wages. Oh! A Merry Christmas to you, Bob. Oh. And a Merry oh. Christmas I hoped and I've given you before. Listen, I want to help you and your family, especially Tiny Tim. We can discuss it this afternoon over a bowl of Christmas punch. Oh. Scrooge did more. Much more than that. He became... As good a friend, as good an employer, and as good a man in London as anyone could remember. Everyone laughed to see the change in him, but he didn't care. Let them laugh. It's a good thing. There should be more laughter in the world. And from then on, he was hardly ever seen without a smile upon his face. Everyone said that Ebenezer Scrooge knew how to celebrate Christmas. And we hope that can be true of us all. And as Tiny Tim would say, God bless us, everyone. Goodbye. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the end of the third and final part of A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. I will be back with another story, Nori, soon. But for now, from me, Natasha. Bye bye.